What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Waterboy Podcast. Today, it is episode number 69. Very special episode. But it's not the episode number 69 I, I hoped it was going to be when I realized this was happening a couple weeks ago. This is uh, not a fun 69. This is, um, this is a heartbreaking 69. So... So yeah, there's there's no other way to start this. Actually, we're doing the college football recap, and I'm actually going to do the rankings before my Ohio State of the Union because I know that's what everyone's actually here for. So we're just gonna we're just gonna start off with that. Everett, get like the timer. If you have a timer ready, we'll do that, or I'll do my rankings right now. No, I have the timer. Okay, the timer is on standby. Okay, all right. Um. Just, just give me a second before we start. It's been a long 48 hours for ah! 20 hours. All right. Okay. All right. Let's do it. All right. Count me down. Three, two, one. Congratulations, Michigan. You've now owned my ass for two years now. And it's looking like you're going to keep on owning my ass for many more years to go. So congratulations, Michigan. Uh, USC coasted by Notre Dame, though, pretty easily. And Caleb Williams locked up the Heisman for good. And Oregon choked a 17-point lead in the fourth quarter against Oregon State. So now USC will get a rematch against Utah in Vegas for the Pac-12 championship. Clemson got upset by South Carolina. And LSU also got blown out by a and last week. I feel your pain, Tiger fans of Clemson and LSU, though. Welcome Cut. to the club. I was also going to mention that Wisconsin, they might have lost to Minnesota, but who gives a shit? They actually won the weekend because they hired Luke Fickle, who's a man I wish Ohio State would have right now. Yeah, okay. just also gonna, just going to add um, Tulane, uh, he wanted no part of that smoke. We sent him packing to a different conference. Different, different yeah, li- literally, actually sent Luke Fickle, beat him in his last game, literally ended his career. Beat him in his last game, broke their 32 I know wins. you. I know you don't want to talk about Tulane more, but I might want to talk about Tulane later this episode. Uh, all I, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a different potential rumor that may be in the books, which would make Tulane the greatest school. Oh, okay. Uh, both west and east of the Mississippi River. So, okay. Uh, college football rankings, though, I want to start some debate. Uh, I want to get you uh, a little involved. Uh, so, yeah, Ohio State fan out here. This is my unbiased college football playoff rankings um, after week 13 going into championship weekend. Georgia, Michigan, TCU, USC, Alabama, Ohio State, Penn State, Washington, Tennessee, Clemson. I think you might need to redo it and specifically be like Georgia. Fuck my life, Michigan. TCU, USC. You just got to really emphasize the I I think I think I, I right. think everyone I think everyone <laughs> I'm about to give Michigan their fucking flowers, okay? Ever they, they don't they don't get more than they deserve. Okay. The tears, the tears ready. No, the, the saline eye drops just but uh so in all honesty, the, those that's how I would rank it. I, I do want to say that what I think the committee will actually will do because it's not what I what I put's not what I think the committee will do. Okay, I think what the committee will do, I think the top four, Georgia, Michigan, TCU, USC, that's that makes sense. That stands still. A lot of people arguing Michigan over Georgia. Um I fucking think Michigan's the best team in the country after what I saw. If J.J. McCarthy plays like that, they're the best team in the country. The one thing, though, is, guys, SEC bias. Like, guys, remember that. Remember that. You can't jump Georgia. Remember that, guys. But, okay. Five, I I think Ohio State's going to get it. I think Ohio State's going to be five. And, unfortunately, I if USC loses, then I think Ohio State's in the playoff. But I don't think USC is losing to Utah in any way, shape, or form. However, if it happens... Bama a two-loss team, by the way. Bama's a two-loss team. Yeah, I think Ohio State's just going to be ahead of Bama, literally because they have one loss. I, You guys heard my rankings. I put Bama ahead of Ohio State, but I think the committee is going to put Ohio State ahead. If USC I mean, loses... 
if USC loses, then I do think if USC loses, you can put Ohio State in. But if USC well, it's, loses, could you if, easily put Bama in? I think if USC or TCU TCU lose, Ohio State will go in to replace either of those teams. If both of them Maybe lose, TCU. If both of them lose, like then it gets. Now, what really gets interesting? I don't is want Ohio State to be in the playoffs. If LSU somehow That's my nightmare. If, if LSU somehow beats Georgia, everything's out of fucking whack. I don't even know what the fuck's if going on. If that happens, I think Georgia's still in. I don't think LSU's Georgia's in. No, but Georgia's Georgia still. But I think is Georgia like, might be like the three seed or four seed. We'll see. Maybe the four Michigan seed. Michigan will be the one. If USC that's the case, then Ohio State really might be in. Fuck. God damn it, dude. My team's not a football team anymore. Okay, we'll, we'll just get into it. Okay. Uh, anyway, though, I just I just want to say I I'm I like don't know why Washington's not playing the Pac-12 championship right now. I I have no idea how that shit works. I don't know why they're not. I don't know. I, I, whatever. I I could have sworn. Someone told me that it was conference record because they have a yeah. I just could have sworn someone told me if Oregon loses and Washington wins, then Washington's in. But that's what makes sense. But I guess not. No, Utah's playing in it. I don't legitimately have no idea how that works. Oregon is no Oregon. Not Oregon lost Oregon State. They're not in it. It's Utah versus USC. Oh, it's a rematch. I thought it's Oregon versus. Did you not hear my college football recap, bro? No. Dude, I was watching the timer the whole me, time. Man. I'm very focused. I'm dialed in to the timer. I said, I said, so now USC will get a rematch for Utah. Pretty sure I fucking said that. Like 80% sure I said that. But okay. Uh, Ohio State. After Saturday. Uh, Ohio State, the union come up in a sec. But uh, last thing I just want to say about, about these rankings. Uh, I think... I think TCU should kind of get in no matter what. Uh, and after what I saw, after what I saw, I mean, we'll see how TCU plays against Kansas. I think they're kind of just like the fucking shitty team in this group. I do think, though, I'm obviously biased here because I'm a fucking USC fan, but I think USC has got a chance to maybe put up, a, put up some shit against Georgia. We'll see what happens I, I'm really curious how USC stops Georgia on defense. And I know we don't think of Georgia as like a prolific offense, but it's I'm like not who's lie, guarding dude. Darnell Washington and Brock Bowers Everett? Who's USC's doing it? defense was actually looking pretty, pretty good. Very, versus- very fucking good against Notre Dame. It's just the thing is no one knows how to, how to block those two boys, but okay. Uh, Everett, do you, have, do you have any opening thoughts for this Ohio State of the Union as a you know, close friend of a – a diehard Ohio State fan who now is going to get his fucking heart crushed every Thanksgiving break for the rest of his life. So um, what are your thoughts about my sanity going forward? No, I stated that somebody needed to do a wellness check on uh, on Grant after Saturday. I uh, tweeted that. Um, Grant didn't text me back for about six hours and then didn't text me back all of yesterday. I really think that he was contemplating life choices, the reality of the world um what is life you know the big questions um i also don't know how long ryan day actually is going to be able to stay alive in columbus after after that performance Uh, so not really taken lightly so um first things first i just want to say all credit to michigan i'm not gonna make any excuses here acting like ohio state should have won this game no they shouldn't have. Holy shit, Michigan is clearly the better team than us. Above all, I was beyond impressed how Michigan responded when they were faced with adversity and shit wasn't going their way. Okay, that's something I wish that Ohio State could learn a thing or two about. So early on in the game, Ohio State's waltz down the field, first drive, 7-0 in like four minutes. Michigan comes back. They get down the red zone. Settle for a field goal. That doesn't rattle them, though. That doesn't throw them off. That's not how they want to be. They don't want to be behind early against Ohio State. That's not how they're built. But they don't give a fuck. They keep on fighting. They keep punching. And this is the part where 
I'm about to be a little salty fucking baby bitch. But the fact that Ohio State was only up by three points at halftime is just a testament to how poorly coached and shitty execution that this Ohio State team had. And it was there all fucking year, all season. They did not play a good first half the entire fucking season. Literally the whole fucking year, not a single good first half. And I didn't expect anything to change this year, but I expected something to happen the second half. That didn't fucking happen. Nothing happened. But Michigan, I was beyond impressed that those motherfuckers the whole year, they could only run the ball. They could only run the ball. And guess what? Their star running back, Blake Quorum, was not healthy for this game. Literally played like two snaps. Was not healthy. And their backup running back, Donovan Edwards, right, his right main dominant carrying hand was like broken. And he literally was running inside zones with his left hand, only one hand on the ball, because that's how unconfident he was using his main hand. And they were still gashing us like it was nothing. And then also, of course, J.J. McCarthy turns into fucking 2007 MVP Tom Brady against Ohio State, because of course, that, that's how Michigan treats this game. That's how they enter this game. They go into it, treating it like the Super Bowl, because it is the Super Bowl. And look what happens. Look how J.J. performs. That's what you're going to get when, you, when you're going to try like that. At the end of the day, I'm just disappointed and a bit embarrassed. Not that embarrassed, more so disappointed, but yeah, embarrassed. And I'm, I'm disappointed, embarrassed because I tricked myself into thinking this team was something fucking special and that Ryan Day was something special. I mean, here, here's, the, here's my opinion. I tricked myself. Is, I, I was don't an absolute think, fool. I think, I think that you guys had, I think Ohio State had the – players the talent that they needed in order to win i think that was present it's execution and it's coaching it, and it doesn't with, even matter about the players it's just the it's, thing it's is we're about coaching. to get in uh i was thinking that uh him knows it's not a thing anymore jim knows justin fry tim walton i thought these guys were gonna come around and fucking change something nothing cha- i'm a clown i'm a fool all of you michigan fans out there you deserve to clown my ass right now, okay? Because I am a dumbass for believing in this fucking team. There was nothing to believe in. The whole year I saw it in front of my eyes and I just tricked myself into thinking something was just going to switch overnight. No, it, it was never going to fucking change. It was the whole fucking year, pathetic, all fucking year. And then, of course, I get let down. But my okay. dumbass didn't expect that uh, to happen. My so, players so- fucking gave up and quit in the third quarter of this game. But my coach gave up in the third quarter. First and down, for first down, first and 10, first down. We're on the 40, 50 yard line, best field position of the game. We get like a fucking false start. And then G Scott headbutts a player. I don't even remember what the fucking call was. was. Out of unnecessary bounds. roughness. Out of bounds. Uh, out of bounds. Unnecessary, unnecessary roughness. Headbutts unnecessary roughness, maybe. I also had no idea that penalty's half the distance to the goal line. But then it's first and 35. And you know what? Okay, if it's first and 35, the drive in your head, as a fan, you're thinking, all right, we're fucking about to punt. But but as a team, I don't, I would, I'd hope you weren't fucking thinking that. But Everett, it's first and 35. Guess what the play call was that Ohio State drew up? They ran a toss on first and 35. Yeah, that that showed me that Ryan Day fucking gave up and decided we're punting before that drive even fucking began after that headbutt that's a pussy ass mentality to me everett that's not my head coach this man everett this man had marvin fucking harrison one-on-one with a true freshman at the end of the game guess how many targets marv had at the end of the game everett four four targets Zero. Zero. Okay. You Did not a get a target. fucking target at the end of the game against a true fucking freshman cornerback. True freshman. I'm sorry, but I thought Marv was the best receiver in college football. What? Why does? Why is he not getting the ball one on one against a true freshman in the shoe in the biggest game of the year against Penn State four weeks ago? We're going up against a potential first round talent, Joey Porter Jr. at corner. And we're throwing a Marv every play, but we don't, we're not doing it against Michigan. We're throwing bubble screens and fucking pitches on third and four. 
when we're running it inside, it's working all game. Okay. It's just Ryan Day, I'm done with you. I'm done with you. And I so, see a lot of people online effort saying, imagine being an Ohio State fan right now saying, I I want to fire Ryan Day for going eleven and one. Now, for a lot of for a lot of you people out there, I don't I don't get I don't expect you to get it. You know, I don't expect you to understand it. That's okay though. But for Ohio State and Michigan fans, there's one game on the schedule every year. Okay. There's one game on the schedule every year. Coaches get hired to Ohio State to beat Michigan. Okay. That's that's goal number one. And if you can't get that goal done, everything else doesn't even matter. That's the only goal that matters. Period. And Ryan Day has now failed two years in a so row. What what do you one? What, what would you do about Ryan Day? And two, if you wanted to fire him, who would you want to replace him with? So uh, I, I'm about to get to that in one second. I just want to make one last quick point about why I'm done with Ryan Day, okay? In the 90s, Ohio State, they had a coach, John Cooper. He was their head coach for 13 years. He had a very, very impressive record there. He averaged, I think his average record per season was about eight and four, nine and four with a bull win. He had an 111, 43, and four overall record at Ohio State over 13 years, Everett, okay? But his record against Michigan was 2, 10, and one. To me, the fact that he even lasted 13 years is absurd in my eyes. Yeah. I cannot do 2, 10, and one over the next 13 or 11 years, Everett. I can't do that. I refuse. And right now, Ryan Day, you are John Cooper 2.0. And I'm done with this man because that team, the way, the way that after the game was over. Now, if you're a coach, obviously you're going to have to say this, but God damn it. Have some fucking self-awareness, dude. Ryan Day went up there and said, we'd be a dangerous team if we made the playoff. I wanted to fucking punch him in the fucking face through my goddamn phone when I read that. I literally wanted to fucking punch him in the face when I heard that, okay? That fucking broke me when that was his reaction to losing like that. And one last thing, I want to say this on behalf of CJ Stroud. I, I, I love CJ. I'm a big fan. His post-game comments... There were many portions of it where I felt extremely bad for him when he was saying, you know, I, I stopped trying, stopped living a personal life. I put everything I had into this game. You, you had me there, brother. I, I, I would have, I would have, I would have rode with you. I would have continued supporting you, but he ended that off saying, but this one game shouldn't define me. That's where you lost me, brother. That's where you're wrong, brother the Michigan game does define you. It's the only thing that defines him. I'm going to remember CJ Stroud for the rest of my life as the quarterback that went 0-2 and helped turn the tides around in favor of Michigan in this rivalry. That's how I'm going to remember CJ Stroud for the rest of my life. I mean, the difference is if you're an Ohio State fan, if you're an Ohio State fan, then yes, obviously your, right your opinion, now. your opinion is what obviously if you're an Ohio State fan, then that's the general opinion. But it's common is towards everybody. So that comment, yeah, like normal, like like recruiters, scouts. I don't like care though. Normal he knows fan bases are not going to gonna define him by the he, he's, one he's talk, He knows who he's talking to in that press conference. That's the last time I'll ever hear him speak about Ohio State. Uh, but yeah. Simply put, Ryan Day, goodbye. It was nice knowing you. I, I backed him up as long as I could, but, but after those two straight losses and his response to it, and after I saw him sing Carmen, Ohio, and like embarrassingly put up a little OH and walking off with his head down between his little fucking legs like a little dog, I literally never want to see him coach again for Ohio State. Only thing is, I know he's going to be back next year. Okay, uh, so so here's the deal. So I want him gone. I know he's going to be back next year, but let's play the game. If I got rid of Ryan Day, who would I replace him with? Let's play that ever because that's a fun fucking game. 
So, okay, my number one option, I also want to put a disclaimer. I know that this literally has a 0% chance of happening. Okay, literally there is no percent chance that this is going to happen. It, he, this man left Ohio State initially because he didn't like recruiting in 2011. What the fuck makes you think he's going to like it now with NIL in 2022 in the transfer portal? Uh, but it's Mike Vrabel. That's my number one option. If I could pick any man on earth to be the head coach of Ohio State football, it's Mike EV. Gave me big Vrabes. That man would... That man just embodies Ohio State and he'd set the fucking culture straight. And that's what this team needs. Some culture, some fucking heart, some fucking, some, some grit to them, Everett, okay? Uh, but I know that's not realistic. So I, I'm not even considering it a possibility. You I just mean said your this- realistic yes. list. I want your realistic now, list. Now my realistic, you guys all know the fucking answer. I don't even need to say his fucking name, okay? Uh, now this is the thing. You all know who I'm fucking talking about. And the truth is, yes, I do want him back badly i want him back now okay i literally would take anything i saw a walter white meme when they were doing their announcement for ryan day it's fucking urban playing ncaa 14 die simone he hands the controller over to ryan day and it's the fucking meme uh on there just saying uh no no urban don't get him it's gonna ruin everything you found out it's that meme and oh my god that literally is how i'm feeling right now ryan day he was burned he was born on third base and the motherfucker forgot to tag up on the pop fly this motherfucker is the worst fucking coach ever so embarrassing the amount of fucking talent he has we've had one two three realistic Natty chances. 2020, we weren't beating Bama. 2019, we weren't even beating LSU, but losing to Clemson is enough. The 2019 Clemson loss last year to Michigan, just how we treated that game. And then obviously this unacceptable. You're not Clip all of that. Gone. Clip all of that. I do not want to see Brian Day rant. Clip all of that. I literally do not want to see him ever coaching on an Ohio State uh, sideline ever again in my life. I'm done with it. We're done here. Ryan Day, we're done here. Okay? We're done here. That's all I have to say. We're done here. Um, But you guys all know, fucking Urban. My my other was Luke Fickle, but he just got hired to Wisconsin. So Luke that's Fickle, not by an the way, anymore. A head coach Luke at Fickle, Ohio State. He has coached at Ohio State before. For one year, and he did. He, he that did was the great. second time I've lost, I've lost in Michigan in my life. But hey, I've lost in Michigan twice in the past two years now. Luke Fick only lost once, so fuck. It's better than Ryan Day. So fuck, I'd take him. That back. was pre pre Urban Meyer too. So the team was not as stacked as it is right now. No, no, he didn't, and his team got gutted that year. He did have Braxton Miller as a quarterback, but whatever. Uh, we actually beat Wisconsin that year with Luke Fickle as the interim head coach. Little fun fact: I'll be bringing that up when we play him. But the thing is mini outlook on i don't even want to think about next season but i am now genuinely afraid of michigan every year next year we're actually gonna lose by fucking 30 again i don't even know how much uh, we JJ lost McCarthy, by. you gotta he's gonna be back lost, you don't have a quarterback we lost by oh we only lost by 22 i thought it was worse than that but 22 it i hope the coaches feel like it's we lost by 60 I who's, like, uh, but I know they, I know they're not treating it like that right now. Who's your quarterback next year, by the way? Because CJ Stroud is not going to be there. Kyle McCord, who okay. uh, was Marvin Harrison's quarterback in high school. I'm not fucking expecting shit out of him. Though. We'll see what he does. Everett, 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 Everett. You know what I'm rooting for? What are you rooting for? I'm rooting for an Ohio State Tulane Cotton Bowl. I don't know if that will happen. That means they got to like you guys are making the Rose Bowl right now. No, I I actually want Ohio State to decline the uh, Rose Bowl and let Penn State go. I, we're gonna lose the Rose Bowl, and I also really really think Tulane would probably beat Ohio State right now because Kyle McCord would be playing quarterback. Yeah, I guess he. I literally think you'd beat us. I'm not. I'm not fucking lying. Did you see them in the second half? I did. It wasn't uh, it? Wasn't a football team? It wasn't pretty. There. No, it was not pretty. They didn't care. They but hey, uh, 
we gotta win that we gotta win this championship game first to, to talk about that so uh but okay fun little talk just some rumors flying around it's been going on for a while now it started like three weeks ago dion shopping around nebraska matt ruley is now the nebraska head coach uh colorado I'm shame too. on you matt ruley you had the greatest job in sports being a recently fired head coach the or just the greatest job on earth not even sports but he wants to get back into coaching fuck it uh so he's at Nebraska, fix at Wisconsin, but Deion Sanders, uh, people, rumors going around in Everett. <laughs> the rumor going around is that Deion, Deion might be going to, to Tulane to roll wave. Now, now this is all speculation. Nothing, nothing is fucking in cement. E- even maybe some rumors you fuckers might have been hearing. Uh, but when it comes to Deion Sanders, the head football coach of Tulane, Everett. Nothing is nothing is solidified. <laughs> nothing, nothing is certain. I'm. We're just we're playing if, here. We're having fun. If just hypothetical, if Coach it's Fritz were to leave, cool. if cool. Coach Fritz were to leave, which I would be sad to see him go because I love I love that man and um, I'd like to to keep him around Tulane. But if he decides to depart. Deion Sanders to Tulane would be uh, quite the quite the pickup for the institution, for the program. Uh, the program. It, it'd definitely be quite the pickup for the program. Uh, but, yeah, yeah that's, that's what I had on college football. Um, no, I'm you had one more thing. You did have one more thing. What? There are no longer... Ohio State of the Unions after this week. Oh, yeah, there's no more Ohio State of the Unions after this week. Um, we're gonna be um transferring to uh oh fuck um these are turning uh into Trojan transfers. Uh yeah, I I've transferred. Well, I mean I go to USC, but yeah, I've transferred to USC now. Um the Ohio State talk is dead. Probably will be dead next year, too. Caleb Williams is the fucking truth, okay? We just fucking shit on Notre Dame. I told all you fuckers it was going to happen. I didn't give Notre Dame an ounce of credit last week. USC, in the Cali, we hosted it. Fucking shit on them. Destroyed Notre Dame. Went 2-0 and against them this year, even though the first team that beat them fucking sucks ass. But the second team that beat them actually has some fucking promise, okay? USC Trojans. <laughs> for risky. Okay, watch the fuck out. Okay, this isn't Oklahoma. All right, this is USC. Okay, we actually have talent out here. Okay, we're not Oklahoma. Okay, we actually have talent out here at USC. It's not going to be USC. Uh, okay, that's not going to happen this time against Utah. James D. Ross, you better fucking say Utah what happened. That's what's going to happen this weekend. Okay, I definitely just fucking set myself up. This is not going to end well. But USC, guarantee it. Uh, at least a a one point win at the minimum against Utah this weekend. Guarantee it. Mark my fucking words, baby. At least, okay. at least a win. At least a at one least point a win. win. Fight, fight the fuck on. All right. Okay. That's all I got on college football. Okay. <laughs> Everett, NFL. Do you want me to recap right now or can I bolt the fuck up? Let's do recap. Do Let's re- do recap. Yeah, do yeah, recap. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do recap. Uh, do recap. Because this might take like three tries, so we got to get this in. These have been fucking horrible. Last week, um, last week it was Thanksgiving morning. I'm sitting here editing my NFL recap. I didn't post it if you guys uh, probably didn't notice because they've been shitty anyway. But I didn't upload one last week. And when I was going back and re-watching it, that was the worst fucking thing I've ever done in my life. And my family, we went on the road, OTR to a family friend's house for the first time since like 2019 for Thanksgiving. I was out of the house. I was watching Vikings on the go. I was watching Cowboys literally on foreign soil when it comes to TV uh, scenario. So I was in, I was in a foreign location. I was uncomfortable in my area and I did not have time to re-record. And so I just said, fuck it. This shit is so ass. We're just skipping. I mean, if you had posted that you're, you're, but you guys you bring, got you guys got content anyway, so I don't want to hear that shit. I mean, I mean, if you if you had posted that NFL recap, you'd be bringing shame and dishonor upon your family for generations. 
Oh, it would have been so bad. We, I mean, yeah. I mean, people probably would have reported our account and would have been okay. well-deserved. But okay. Get the community uh, guidelines again. Uh, yeah, uh, NFL recap. Get that clock ready, Everett. Let me crack my bones a little bit. Let, let me peep, peep one more game real quick. One game I'm not going to mention, but I wanted to shout out the Jets. Zach Wilson, you, sir, are the problem. Uh, I think we found that one out today, folks. Mike White Zach season. Wilson is so bad. Okay. He's unbelievably trash. I mean, Mike, what now I know it's the Bears. Like I know their defense is awful, but still, I bet Zach Wilson would have gone out there and gone what? Like 12 for 27. 12 for 27, <laughs> 97 yards, two picks, and like, I don't know, 15. No, it'd probably cards. be like one touchdown, one pick, so Jets fans can like slightly defend him, and it's just like, oh my god! Like it would be, it would be thirteen for twenty-seven, ninety-seven yards, one touchdown, <laughs> one pick, one yeah, fumble. Like yeah, yeah. Two rushes for sixteen yards. That's <laughs> yeah. <the style. laughs> yeah, but the two rushes for sixteen yards, one of them was a nice little play, though. So the Jets also, fans also, are... he'd be sat. He'd have three sacks. However, there would be Garrett no Winston, pressure. Three receptions, nine targets. <laughs> Also, he'd be sacked three times, but all of which would not account to Lyman because it'd be specifically his own fault. Actually, he wouldn't even get targeted nine nine times. It'd be like six targets, two catches. <laughs> it'd be it'd be three receptions on seven targets for nineteen yards. And one of those targets was actually to a different receiver, but it was so off that they counted as a target <laughs> to Garrett. But yeah, okay, NFL recap time. Oh my god! All right, three, two, one, go. Jacoby Brissett went out with a dub over Tom Brady before the other guy comes back next week. The Bengals took down the Titans on the road without Joe Mixon or Jamar Chase. The Jaguar Jaguars lost ET in the first half, but still hung on to beat the Ravens. My Bolts actually made a comeback and we won a game. Josh Jacobs walked it off for the Raiders with an 85 yarder in OT and quick Thanksgiving recap. Bills made a, a quick late comeback over the Lions. Cowboys held on to beat the Giants and Kirk Cousins actually won a primetime game. Exactly 30 seconds. Yeah, I mean, I got to edit. I fucked up like a Jaguars or something. But Jag- ah, no, we're leaving it in. Jag- no, 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 we're Jag- leaving it. You know, if, it if it's perfect 30 seconds, I'm leaving all fuck up so people can clown me. I'm. You guys deserve that liberty after how Maybe shitty nothing, Ohio State played last weekend. Nothing without our haters, but specifically okay. every Michigan fan right ever, now. Ever, ever, I, I'm really sorry. I, I know. I mean, if we're going chronological or fuck it, we'll talk about the Vikings first. We'll pull the fuck up. I'm. There's actually going to be some excitement on my end, other than the Trojan uh, transfer segment. But okay, ever. Let's talk. Let's talk some Vikings. Break me down through this one. Kirk Cousins. Won a primetime game. I don't even fucking remember this game. This was this was so long it's ago. it's so <laughs> long ago. It, it, it is unbelievably long ago. I, I, won't, I won't I won't lie. I I do remember having some anxiety because so there's there's a meme on Vikings Twitter. Um, it, I've seen it pass around to, through a couple teams, but it originated on Vikings Twitter, and it's it's the picture of the Vikings logo, and then it's kind of like the brackets showing each quarter, yeah. and it goes quarter one. It's like all right, this isn't bad. Quarters two through two through three goes i want to die why the fuck am i a fan of this fan base like we are absolutely dog shit i'm gonna kill myself and then quarter four it's like oh we won sick like awesome yeah. no yeah i i have seen that right. movie. okay explain explain real quick something give me two minutes i'll be right back one sec but keep going okay. keep going Vikings. Okay. so once again I, like what i really like to see this game what i was very happy with was the usage of justin jefferson in different formations instead of just running him at a, at a normal, like, one spot right on the outside. They ran him in slot. They ran him in the backfield. They ran him on sweeps. They had him throw again. Uh, currently, he has completed all of his passes So in the NFL, yeah. so I think he's got, like, three completions. Yeah. So it was just very nice to see Justin Jefferson being used in a variety of ways this week in comparison to how he's been used the last couple of weeks. Also, just want to note, he couldn't have broken Randy Moss's record in any better way than the catch that he broke it on. In double coverage, over the shoulder, catches it contested, comes down with it for 37 yards and breaks Randy Moss's record. Couldn't have asked to break it in any but better way. Uh, yeah, Dal- record breaker game. I prematurely called that one out. Kind of. That was my. That was. I'm the reason you guys lost that game. Blame that one on me. That Cowboys lost. Uh, I, I was at that game. I blame you. Um. Also, just interesting to note, Dalvin <laughs> Cook, 22 carries for 42 yards. So. 
obviously didn't play as well, but Alexander Madison, three carries 11 yards, 4.7 or 3.7 yards per carry. Um, Putting up numbers. Let's he, go 11 yards. 11 yards, but just the carry, like he, for whatever <laughs> reason, the bruiser kind of back did better against the Patriots defense than Dalvin. I, I also do be. think though, Patriots kind of just built to stuff. Stuff no, they are, there. but also uh, Matthew Judon, who didn't didn't do anything that game. Oh, nothing. Dude, you're gonna call him out, dude. I'm I, calling him out. Nothing. You pick fucking fights with people. He had two quarterback hits. Didn't have a sack. Didn't have a but sack. But guess what? Guess what? Our uh, starting left tackle out. Starting right one guard. Sack. Starting right guard. Dog shit. Starting left guard out. Center right tackle. Okay, you're there. But that's it. Like, I mean, the O-line is just absolutely crippled. You should be, if you're the best defensive end, outside linebacker, rushing end in football right now, you should be able to do something versus the Vikings offense. Offense. I, I'm pretty impressed with the efficiency of the pass. Also, Start 30 also, for 37. By the way, by the way, Kenny Wangwu oh, took one to the house. The kick, yeah. Return the kick. He currently has, so he has three kick returns for touchdowns in his career. By the way, he's only been in the NFL for two years. He averages a kick return for a touchdown every 13 and a half kick returns, that which is higher, good. higher than Devin Hester, higher than Cordell Patterson, higher than Devin Hester, the higher than ever, Percy Harvin. Right? Highest ever if he keeps pace with it. Yeah, I'm just, we're talking on pace. That, that's got to be the highest. But yeah, Minnesota's got some special teams over there. Uh, nine and two. Um, we called this a must win game last week. You guys come out on top, get the win, frisky, gutsy win. Um, Everett, though, I, I, I was hearing some things you were talking about the defense. What are your thoughts on Super Bowl hopes now? Give me a percentage confidence. You want my winning, percentage the winning Super the Super Bowl? Twenty-three percent. Okay, goat. Now you might be setting yourself up for failure in some memes by saying twenty-three. There, you could have just said twenty or twenty-five, but you twenty twenty-three, and uh, hopefully that goes your way. Fifteen like percent. Hopefully but, that goes your way, brother. We'll, but look, we'll have to find I, like, out. My my perspective is anything under like twenty-five percent is very unlikely. For oh my god, that Mac, Mac attack through for almost four hundred. Our defense is absolutely crippled i'll walk the back maybe it's more like seven i'll put like 17 percent. probably it's probably <laughs> probably around 17 but because i'm thinking about the, the most confident you've ever been in the vikings team 27 you can remember 2017 was the most confident i'd ever 2017 ever. still 2017. Okay. okay and and the big the big difference is the defense we had in 2017 best was real the, no, literally the best defense in the NFL. And had one of the really best defenses fun. in yeah. NFL history that year. Everson um, Griffin, right? Everson Griffin, Daniel Hunter, Xavier Rhodes, best season. Uh, Andrew Sandejo uh, was there. Uh, who's, who's, Harrison the guy Smith. Who, who's the guy who wore the glasses? The Steven nose. Weatherly? Nose guard. D-tackle. Oh, Linval, Linval Joseph. Linval Joseph. <laughs> yep. Linval. Um, Sheldon Richardson, I think, might have been on the team that year. Uh, yeah, Trey Wayne's Alex, um, uh, uh, Mackenzie Alexander, Eric Hendricks, Anthony Kendrick. Barr. Oh, yeah, Barr, bro. Rep my high school, baby. Let's go. Um, but like that defense was one of the best in NFL history by a statistical sense. And this defense, yeah, that this defense year, literally defense you know, locked down the city. That's how good they were. Defense wins championships. And this defense for the Vikings this year. Are they going to win a championship for you guys? Dog shit. <laughs> dog shit. Absolute dog shit. Okay. They are 32nd. So they are the worst. Are you still are sticking the, with that number? They are, are the worst. Uh, they are the worst defense in the NFL right now. By statistical stance. <laughs> worst defense in the NFL. Really? Like I'm pretty sure maybe maybe not after this <laughs> week in full, but after last game, yeah, they were. Um, that 17% fully comes down to the offense because the offense is able to make up that percentage that the defense takes away. The problem now is if the defense was actually good, holy shit, the Vikings would be an unbelievably good team. If the defense was good, 
and their offense is playing the way that they little, would. Little, little projections, but okay. They'd yeah. be able to actually blow they'd, out teams, which never will team. never happen this 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 year. And the, the big thing is, one, Ed Donatel needs to get fired. I understand that he was hired because Kevin O'Connor wanted some seniority on, on, the, on the team, somebody who's been around the block, right? Ed Donatel sucks ass. Terrible fucking coach. You hey, should not be playing. I think you should he not sets be playing the culture in the locker room ever. So I'd keep him on board. I you learned a thing playing... or two about culture this this weekend with Ohio I State. Mean. So I think I I think he's a culture fit. I think he sets a tone for your team, and I I think he's giving you a lot of a lot of positive you know who things that, that might not be clear and, and you know has who, open. You know who Ed, you know who Ed you is? You know who Ed Don tells? Yeah, defensive coordinator. Okay. Yeah. No, he should be fired. No, um, no, he sets a tone. And uh, trust me, Everett, your team yes, has the, some culture to it, okay? The 62-year-old man on, on the, who calls a defensive play sets the tone when he plays off coverage and gets our defensive backs torched every five fucking plays culture? for 42 yards. Culture? Hey, 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 W speak for itself. I'm like, my fucking team, we can't fucking win games when it matters, but your team can. Uh, um. Yeah, they fucking defense. Can. You know what? I mean, people defense like to debate that one, but I'm I'm saying they can. Uh, I I just think that Ed Donatel needs to fucking pick it up. He needs to blitz more often. When he actually gets pressure by blitzing, yeah, get on his ass. They do really well. They coverage well. Like the thing is, you don't have to cover as well if your defensive line can get pressure, and their defensive line that has not been able to get pressure. True, but maybe. They uh they can't blitz a no, like like I yes I I understand but, I understand that the Vikings ran a fucking practice we'll squad corner for their corner two last week I understand that they had literally three or four starting corners uh playing last week and three of them were elevated from the practice squad essentially even though I mean they were on the roster beforehand but they essentially are like really far depth signings and practice squad players um which shouldn't be happening. So I get getting them back, but one, you need to make more pressure, call more blitzes, play man more often. When we play man, we do better. We do better in man coverage. So I don't know why we're playing off coverage so much. I understand some teams obviously can get over the top, but even when you're doing that and you're playing off and you're playing zone, you're playing shell coverage, it doesn't matter because they still torch over the top because you don't put the safeties there to give them secondary help. So just blitz more, play more man, See what you can do with that team. Also put Brian Asamoah, rookie, put him in over Jordan Hicks. Jordan Hicks sucks. <laughs> Is it uh, Hicks from the Cardinals now? Mm-hmm. Sucks ass. Yeah, no, not, not a great player. But yeah, okay, Vikings, Vikings break down 17% of the Super Bowl. Okay, it's time, it's time to bolt, bolt up, boys. Comeback win, big time win. Uh, my, my, my quick reaction to this game was, well, first things first, I was shocked how the defense got three straight stops at the end of the game. I'd never seen anything like it in my life. It, like, there were there was a couple of, like, third and longs where I literally thought to myself, ah, oh, let's see how the Cardinals convert this one, because that's just how this happens. But we were actually getting stops, and it was it was kind of, like, beautiful to watch. And my bolts, Herbert kind of led... Nice, nice little drive. It was a short field, 50, 40 yarder down, but we drive down, got the touchdown, scored, and got the two point conversion. And I also wanted to say phenomenal goal line plays from Joe Lombardi. Holy shit. I was shocked. Phenomenal plays. I, I've never seen anything. Li- now, people can question, like, holy shit, we actually threw to Gerald Everett for our two point conversion, but it fucking worked. He sauced Isaiah Simmons' ass, and it worked. So, like, I can't be mad. Like, I can't. Phenomenal play calling. I was shocked that Joe Lombardi won us this football game. He did. At least on the last two plays, he did. So, I never thought I'd be saying that this year, but I am. And it happened. You think he feels like he's coaching for his job right now? I think like, that like, literally right. got him off the hot seat and he has another year. Same thing with fucking uh, Staley. I literally no, think no, they no. bought you, another you, year you, after that. You, I'm dead ass. You think that they're going to keep Brandon Staley over no Sean what now? Payton? Over Sean Payton? Well, well, I'm assuming Sean Payton's not coming. Obviously, John Payton said obviously. that he obviously. only wants to coach either the Cardinals but or I think the Chargers. It's a, I think it's... A, I can never believe anything a coach says. I, I think he's lying. 
I can never believe anything they say ever. Trust me, coach, I want though. it to be. I, I know, but I can never. He's playing a game. He wants something with else. With who? Who is he Everett, playing a game I with? I don't know how that fucking works. I'm not a fucking NFL owner. What? I don't fucking know. But they never tell the truth. No, it's never fucking true. Like, we thought... Who was saying Brady Bucks? It was like Brady Dolphins. It was like Brady Richards. Brady Bucks was in the mix, but it was never the fucking first. The first option's never right. And the fact that the Chargers are like the first thought makes me think like, what, eh. But what does that have to do with coaching? I, I'm just saying anything in the line. NFL. What? No, no, I'm just saying anything in the NFL. Any first news, that's not what fucking happens. No. They lie. NFL, it's in their blood to lie to the media. It's literally built into them. You're a bad coach if you don't lie. Oh, I'm saying. You can never believe a word they fucking say. But obviously, I'd take Sean Payton ever. Duh, don't get me wrong. But I'm assuming that's not going to happen. And I think this bought Lombardi and uh, Staley another year. Does it buy them another year with you? Because I guarantee you, if with you say me? Yes, no, dude, I, I was out on them week, weeks ago, but but the GM's not out on them. GM I mean, the might also games, be right? out. I just think after last offseason, I literally think that bought him another year. I don't think he needs to do anything this season. Like, I think that's how they operate. To be fair, to be fair, literally, <laughs> literally last offseason, the only player that he got that's been effective. Uh, nah. Matt, and Lindsay. No, that was two years or, ago. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, it was two years ago. But no, yeah. Yeah, true. I mean, JC Jackson. Signing that they got JC Jackson's dog shit expect. out for the season. He was asked before he fucking tore out his leg. I mean, it's just like he was just like hurt before he even showed up and we just weren't even aware. But yeah, I mean, yeah. But I, I think outlook for this team, we get Raiders next week. Okay. <laughs> Sign me the fuck up. We get Raiders next week, then we get the Dolphins. Then we get the Titans. But then we get the Colts. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna respond against Jeff Saturday you, uh, in prime time. Okay. I'm not gonna lie. Day you after can't. Christmas. You, you got you gotta give Jeff Saturday a bit of respect right now, though. But but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna win that game. And then uh the week after we get Rams prime time, that's a dub. We're beating the fucking Rams. The Rams yeah, suck. Yeah, Mass, Mass Stafford the Rams suck. might be out for the season. And Mass then Stafford we end the year in mile high at Broncos country. Let's fucking ride, baby. Who knows? Let's you might be. A dub. Chargers we might be and playing. And 3-0. and oh. Like, I, I, I'm really thinking about this. I 4-2 and two, rest of the season, ever. We're 6-5 right now. You're missing, right now, you're missing the two. big point. You're missing the big point. 10-7. Ten 10-7. And seven. Ten no, and you, seven. you're missing the big point right now. The what? Chargers, the last game of the season versus the Broncos, the Chargers aren't just playing for playoff hopes. The Chargers aren't just playing to win the division. The Chargers are playing to keep Russ away from breaking the record for throwing more touchdown passes than toilets in his house. Oh, shit. I didn't even... That cons- is okay. what matters now, the most. We're locking that one down. We're, we're going to lock that. Judy's out for, I think... I could be completely wrong on that, but I, I remember Judy getting hurt recently. I don't know. I think he's back. I'll I'm, be I'm, I'm, I'm honest. I don't fucking know. But I did see uh, that one Broncos D lineman <laughs> fucking chirping Russell chirping Wilson for sucking. <laughs> well deserved. It's about time that Russell actually like gets some shit talk to his face. Dude needs to take some accountability for how bad the offense is. Like, I mean, at least Zach Wilson finally came out and was like, I apologize for what I said. Like, that shit's my fault. Like I need I, that. That's on me. Like at least he said that afterwards. But the immediate reaction, I mean, you you, you can't win back over after that. Like they know what. No, you I think the locker thought. room might actually They're be already fucked. out. Look how they you, played for the fight. Like he 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 like that locker. Like they I, just I, I, beat I, the fucking coin with Mike White. If Zach Wilson was starring, the coin would have fucking. The coin would have would have won. Nathan <laughs> Peterman that. actually <laughs> clip that fucking one. Now, I mean, that's something I'll stand by that one. If Zach Wilson started that game, Bears win. I think the coin thought that Zach, the Zach Wilson would be playing. I think we should let the coin have a repeat. Yeah, the I, coin, the well, coin didn't get a fair maybe, chance. Maybe we give that one a pass. Keep the coin going yeah, for the rest of the season. It's um, going to be a six game. Although I do feel, I do now. feel better now though because when the Vikings play the Jets next week, we don't have to be tasked with beating the coin because the coin's already been beaten. 
feels kind of nice. Um, speaking about the Vikings, though, I got a quick question for you. I want your opinion on this because it's unbiased. Um, here are the two remaining schedules between the Eagles and the Vikings, vying for the number one seed in the NFC. You want me to, to tell you which one I think is tougher or easier? Yes. Don't tell me which team. I don't want any opinion. Just tell me the two schedules, okay? okay? Here are the two schedules. Schedule okay. one. All right. Tennessee. Aaron, Roger, uh, Aaron Rodgers has rib injury. Uh, says yeah, he oblique. expects he has to no, play he has next no week. He has an oblique injury. So he's got a Justin Herbert. Maybe he can yeah. call up my guy to get some some tips. Well, I can connect uh, him. He, he, he can call up that doctor too, and Jordan Love might be starting the rest of the year because Aaron Rodgers will have a punctured lung. But um, yeah, ask, ask Tyrod about that one. But yeah. <laughs> okay, here, here are the two schedules. Schedule one. Titans at Giants at Bears at Cowboys, New Orleans, Giants. Schedule two. I think I know who's who's that one is, but yeah. Schedule two. <laughs> Jets at Detroit, Colts, Giants at Green Bay, at Chicago. I think yours might be slight. Now you have more away games, and we're we gonna have three. See how- we have I the think, same amount yeah, of away games, uh, exact same amount of away games, three away games left. You just have more down the stretch, and I so, feel like there's a well, chance. You okay, may have since it. since it's kind of it's kind of obvious who who is what yeah, schedule. All right, <laughs> the, you said the Eagles Giants twice. I was like, well, I know like, who's ah, this. <laughs> all right. um, the Eagles have three away games back to back to back to back. Yeah, back to back, that's to back. alarming in a row. The Vikings have New York at home. Then they play in Detroit. What if they were just still bye weeks this late into the season? <laughs> I think there still is. There's one next week. Is there actually? Yeah, the Panthers are on bye next week. Oh, shit. Um, so the, the Vikings have the Jets at home. Then they go into Detroit, <laughs> which is away, but not away. It's also indoors. Then they have the Colts at home, indoors. The Giants at home, indoors. At Green Bay, well, obviously outdoors. And at the Bears, there's outdoors. So the end, their their last two weeks of the the season, both outdoors versus Green Bay and versus Chicago. Um, oh, week fourteen's a big bye week. Holy shit! So, but the Vikings get get four more indoor games for the rest of the season. By the way, thirteen to weeks thirteen to sixteen, even including a bye week, they are in indoor indoor facilities, which I think makes a big difference. The uh, the Eagles play. Tennessee outdoors, obviously. Then at New okay. York, at Chicago. And Real at quick, Dallas. I just want to say, I please tell me if I'm crazy. Week 15, we are going to have five Saturday NFL games. Is, Will we? is that a thing? I think that they started doing that this year. Because we had a couple last year, too. Like, I think now on I the- think well, no, well, here's the thing. It's whenever college football ends, they start they take over the the Saturday schedule because there's no com- competition. Oh my holy shit! Okay, for week sixteen, because I guess Christmas Day is like NBA, but Christmas Day is on Sunday. There's gonna be three NFL games on Sunday. There's gonna be like the NFL slate's gonna be on Saturday on Christmas Eve, dude. Holy fuck! That is so li- okay, Everett. Guess how many games are on Christmas Eve? Four. Eleven. What the fuck? There are eleven NFL games on Christmas. Christmas Eve, Eve like Christmas Eve day, are 24th. all Christmas are all Christmas Eve. Like, but I'm saying e- on Christmas, Christmas Eve, day, Eve day or Christmas Eve Eve, where it's no, literally no, all not eleven are going Eve, at six p.m. Christmas Eve day. There are eleven fucking NFL games and. Uh, eight of them will be occurring at 10 a.m. my time. So 1 p.m. Okay. Eastern. Fucking t- <laughs> eight at the same. That's a Christmas miracle. Oh my god. Clip what, that. What are my what are my bolts? What are my bolts fucking playing? What are my bolts playing? Fuck Monday night bolts on Christmas week. Are you fucking kidding me, dude? I can't even watch my team lose on Christmas. God damn it. Dude, that would be a Christmas. That that'd be the biggest Christmas miracle. <laughs> My team winning on oh Christmas Day is awful. Packers, Dolphins, Broncos, Rams, Bucks, Cardinals. That's not a fucking Christmas slate. We're watching Dude, preseason they, they, NFL they, games. No, they they they're just like you've been a little too naughty this year. You're getting cold. 
Call oh my god, games. but Christmas Eve. Okay, listen to these games ever on Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve Eve? Eve? No, just Christmas Eve. Eve There's no Christmas Eve Eve games ever. Fuck. Okay. Uh Saints Browns, but it's it's a Deshaun Watson Christmas Browns. Oh boy. <laughs> Seahawks Chiefs, which I'm I'm picking the Seahawks now for that game. Because fuck it. It's gonna be a Christmas miracle. And that game's in Kansas City, but fuck it. Let's go. Let's go, Seattle. Giants Vikings effort. You got the Giants at home in Minnesota. That'll be a fun one. Uh Bengals Patriots. Burrow versus Belly. Uh and then uh Eagles Cowboys in Dallas. Those are two very Im- impactful games, by the way. Vikings Giants, Eagles Cowboys in Dallas. Two massive games for for NFC Dude, playoffs. Christmas, okay. I mean, I know we might have prematurely gone over, but that's going to be lit. Uh also the way it lines up on New Year's on New Year's Day ever. There's uh, we're not going to preview these, but There's 14 NFL games on New Year's Day, Everett. Wait, what? There are 14 do they, NFL do they football normally play games on, do they normally on play New on Year's Day because it's a Sunday this year. Oh. The playoff games have to be on the 31st because if literally the NFL would get so many more views than the college football playoff this year, the playoff might be bad. The USC game is going to be lit, but... Why the we Michigan do a round of 12 is going to literally would get a fourth of the views for the fucking Cardinals Falcon game. Okay. Like literally no one will watch the college football game. That has to be on the 31st after finding that there's going to be 14 fucking NFL games on new year's day. Everett, the holidays are so lit this year. Everett, did you just hear what I said about Christmas Eve and new year's day? Christmas miracle. It, it it's actually amazing. Okay, holy shit, NFL is live. The the okay, just I'm saying now the memes of NFL is king. It's gonna be Christmas Day. No one's gonna be watching those NBA games. We're gonna be tuning in to fucking Bills Bears over that shit. Okay, we're gonna be tuning in to god awful football games just because it's the NFL. That's how it works. That's just how it uh, works. I uh, I see that the Packers fans have already begun touting Jordan Love as, as the next Tom Brady, mixed with Patrick Mahomes. Seven, they're setting themselves up for failure. It, it, it's a dark path to lead yourself down that road. Now we got Bills Patriots this Thursday. Uh, I mean, Bills are winning that. Oh oh shit! I don't know why. I I just thought. It was Bill's Packers. What the fuck? I don't know why I just thought that. But Jordan Love. So is he. Huh? Packers mm-hmm. fans saying Jordan Love are next time. No, Brady. like, like they, they, they've they got Jordan Packers Love. Packers got the Jordan, Bears next week. Okay, Jordan, that's still Jordan relevant as a Packers five, Bears next week. Jordan Love has a top five arm. Who knows what it will be, but the velocity on this ball, on the move across his body is not normal, and he throws it directly into an Eagles defender. Top five velocity. What the fuck? How do you even track there, that? They're sitting out there with the speedometer like they do for pitches. What the just... fuck are we talking about? Just... And who cares about, honestly, who really cares about velocity you're throwing? I mean, Herbert throws some airbenders, but at the end of the day, as long as you just put the ball in place, it's fine. As long as it's pretty fast, it's good enough. Zach Wilson doesn't know how to do that, though. So is he like a only use me bullets type of guy? <laughs> I don't really know. I can't say I watch much Zach Wilson tapes. I just notice how many low lights there are every weekend, and that's way but you more. Know, than you know, what he's know per- you, know what he's per- you know what he's perfect for. You know what he's perfect. You know what he's perfect for. He'll fit in perfectly on the Colts next year. Yeah, yeah. He'll fit uh, in perfectly there. Ooh, Jets Vikings next week. Ever that'll be tasty for you. But yeah, uh, what what else? What else you got on the NFL? Uh, last week, any any other games? Top of the head, you, you want to bring up Bills Lions game, bit of a comeback out of there. Cowboys like got a dub. I think the Cowboys are actually like one in 13 now in their last 14 Thanksgiving games against the spread. They didn't cover. Uh, oh, there, there was one so... last thing that there, there's, there's one last NFL thing oh, that I oh, wanted to the mention. The fucking Browns beat the Bucks. Okay. 
Yeah, I don't know how that happened. Jacoby Brissett in his last start took down the Bucks. Uh, Tom Brady, I, I guess some Ohio team beat a Michigan man this weekend in Ohio. Some Ohio team won. Wasn't the fucking one that everyone thought would, but fucking God. God fucking damn it. I'm not talking about them anymore. Like Voldemort. I'm actually done. I'm, he, he who shall not be named. Like uh, one last, Honestly, it's fucking horrible. One last thing that I wanted to mention. I don't know if you saw this. It's been all over Twitter for the last couple of days. Uh, there's a video of the Eagles offensive lineman. Um, Christmas? Christmas of their tackle, Kelsey. Jordan Malata and, and Kelsey singing Christmas songs. It's fucking amazing. Uh, that so shit is I'm gonna be amazing. honest, like I kind of have like my preset Christmas. Uh, oh no, I do too. That I go to, but I do too. Fuck it, I might give it give it a try. I might give it a but try. Like, I'm just year. saying, let's just hear the, it. The, the, I just it. it's so unexpected. Like Jordan, like I feel uh, like everyone's got got their Christmas playlist by now. But like I mean, it's it's just so un- unexpected. Kelsey Kelsey is an amazing, like actually not that bad of a singer. And then Jordan Malone, the other just, dude. Jordan, like, like their tackle. What the hell? <laughs> just so what? unexpected. So unexpected. Yeah, I mean, I I feel like that's just kind of a thing, though. I I feel like in uh so many hard knocks, you see like dudes with like random talents and shit for their like talent show for the rookies and shit, and you just see like, oh wow, like, oh like. You mean like uh, Aiden Hutchinson? Yeah. Well, I mean, I I wouldn't quite say that one, but there have been other performances where it's like, oh, that dude like legitimately like might actually be a good singer like if he really like put put everything into it like shit like i can't think of one on the top of my head but i feel like just in past hard knocks they make him do that like rookie talent show bullshit thing no and yeah I, they have it's a little shocking seeing that but then that fucking jordan dude i yeah maybe 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 good. i'll give it a listen we'll see okay. uh, good yeah, Monday night though. Uh, for I mean, we're not gonna be going over this this on Sunday, but Steelers Colts. That sounds like a fucking awful, <laughs> awful Monday night game ever. Jeff Saturday catching another win. This is gonna be Mike Thomas' first season under a five hundred record. Yeah, the Steelers are three and seven. They're they're definitely finishing under five on two more losses, and they're finishing under five hundred for sure. So one more loss because after Monday, when you guys are listening to this on Tuesday, they would have already lost the Colts. So oh damn, you're talking a lot of fucking shit. Uh, Jeff I, Saturday I, and the boys. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, Saturdays are up. for the boys. Left hand up. What a win for the Commanders. Uh, and oh, oh, we, we got to go over this ever. I, you were fucking scarily good with some of your upset picks. Okay. I, I really wasn't thinking about, but I was looking at just some differentials that we had. I went Titans, you went Bengals. Uh, wait. Oh, I, I did went go Falcons, you went Commanders, I'm pretty sure. You went Jaguars, I went Ravens, I went Seahawks. I'm guessing you might have probably also gone Seahawks with me. I don't know. I did also. Yeah, okay. I did. But but yeah, like those three picks are enough to swing it your way. Uh, your way. So I have to I'm do my, my you count. Beat me bad. I'm, I'm going to assume count. I might I might have made I might have made ground. Like I'm not sure what other differentials we had. I can I can do a little math right now and just and just see and then we'll, obviously we'll go over it. I'm not uh, going to count anything right now, but yeah, I just want to point that out. I, yeah, you might, you might have something on me after this picks last week. But okay, real quick, I did want to talk about the Jaguars thing. This might be last thing. Up to you. What, what, what do you want to go over after? But okay, Ravens, Jags, Jags, 18 points in the fourth quarter effort. Okay. Travis Etienne gets hurt early. Trevor Lawrence, 29 for 37, 320 yards, three touchdowns, Everett. Hold up, wait a minute. I didn't know that was the fucking stat line. Wait a holy shit, T Law. Wait, T-Law, wait looking a like second. number one pick. Okay, T Law, 29 for 37, 320 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. They ran got a fumble, 38 he yards on the day, had no help from the running game. He put the team on his back, dude. Zay Jones was his number one receiver. Christian Kirk only had four catches. Everett. What what went into this Jags pick, like in the first place? Like how how do you get that one? Well, we said this last week. I don't remember. 
I said I have been very high on the Jaguars this whole year. <laughs> I think that Jacks. I mean, that's not wrong. Like you said no, yourself, that no, you, you think true. that I pick yeah, them like almost every week. I was about to say, like, I swear you pick them every fucking week. But it's still, More or less, you got. But here, one, the thing but is, I I, like, the it. Jag Jacksonville is cooking up something special. <laughs> they 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 are going to have a very good team. They're frisky, in the next all right. Years. They're fu- they're frisky, frisky guys. They're frisky. They're, frisky. They're, they're gonna screw something up. They're gonna mess someone's. They're gonna ruin someone's playoff hopes. All right. They're both. They're now. somebody. They're gonna knock somebody out of bowl chances right now. Bowl eligibility is going down the toilet. Um, but <laughs> oh my god, no- the Steelers might not even be eligible for a bowl if they don't reach six wins this year. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, go on. Ohio um, State should be eligible for a bowl either. Don't act like I was trying to act like Ohio State was good there, guys. But go on. Um. Yeah, but like the Jaguars actually are like they, they play well against good teams. That's the biggest thing. They play very well against teams that are very prolific in the NFL who are powerhouses. And okay, it's been the so same way. Based the on what you year. just said, my 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 big Jags upset to end the year will be Cowboys at Jags early. Jaguars morning are gonna game win that game in Market Jacksonville. Right now, Jags December eighteenth. Okay, Jags are, Jags are gonna mess stuff up. Okay, they're gonna mess it up. But I also they're just to screw know it up the Cowboys, and then the Jackson Cowboys are gonna beat the Eagles the week after, bro. That's how this league works, Everett. I, I swear, that's how this shit works. That's how it works. It makes no fucking sense, and that's why it's gonna happen. That's how but you also, gotta think. <laughs> Jacksonville. Yeah, this is this is why Vegas always wins. Jacksonville guys. is is having there, is going to have an amazing rebuild. I think that they're going to be a very good team over the next couple years, having top picks. If this is what no they're matter doing right what now, happens, this is going to get clipped one day. But keep going. Jacksonville having top picks, good or bad, having the cap to spend in free agency, looking the way they do right now, they're playing up a the way they do Kirk, right now. But Kirk's playing like it. Kirk's playing good. Kirk's playing good Jacksonville ball. is on pace to have a great rebuild and to be a contender in the next couple of years. One thing I want to say though, Tr- Trayvon Walker is—is is he even on the team? <laughs> I have heard nothing about him since the draft. We, this is my favorite thing ever, is that we heard nothing about him before the draft. Literally two days before the draft, everybody was like, Trayvon Walker is like, number I, one. I might have the side of the day. Oh, okay. He has two and a half sacks this year. Not ideal. He has a pick, though. Still not ideal. Um, but I, what I love about it is literally we heard nothing about Trayvon Walker until literally like a week before the draft. People were like Josh Allen starting to talk about it. Three sacks. The hell's up? What's up with Saxonville? I thought that used to be a thing. That got not disbanded. Anymore. <laughs> that thing, got yeah. disbanded. Yeah, they, they ended that they ended that program or whatever. Um, but no, called. I mean, like, I just love the fact that we heard nothing about Trayvon Walker until like a couple of days before the draft. Then at the draft, we heard him, his name maybe once when it was announced. After that, until now, like nine, yeah. nine months later, we have heard absolutely nothing. I think until I just brought, I think I might have been the first person to bring Trevon Walker up in all media in general since he got drafted. I I, I think I might have just broken the stigma. I think it's now like we could. I that's think now clip. we can start talking about that's Trayvon a, Walker. That's a good clip. When was the last time you heard of him? Because I fucking haven't heard of him ever. ever when this uh, <laughs> when he put on that Jacksonville Jaguars hat on the draft stage, I don't even. Uh, was yeah, he even yeah. on the draft stage? Might might he might have zoomed in? He might have. I, I don't know, in. man. I don't know. I don't fucking that's, remember. That's how much Did we don't even know. Zoom in for the. I don't even remember the fucking draft, dude. The draft was so so fucking like not memorable for me yeah because you guys didn't have a first round pick i mean we did it was a oh, guard but did? we did zion Johnson. oh yeah you got i mean zion we did Johnson. but i mean that's cool disrespect our guy fuck it whatever but yeah uh well to be fair i was out that i night. mean guards I, are I, players I too that. guard guards are people yeah our draft expert going down the night of the draft wow <laughs> talking about a man who cares about his craft uh but anyway well to be fair the draft expert also missed every single pick that he <laughs> no gave. you got one you got, got one. one in the wrong spot and it was the seahawks tackle charles cross <laughs> the fucking great 
just the most random one to get right. Charles Cross Seahawks. I did see that there, there's that one Barcelona guy, Stephen Che. He he had the most players to the right team out of every mock drafter. And I was actually like kind of fucking shocked because Stephen Che's a meme. But okay. Um, closing remarks. I'll make my closing remarks about Ohio State. Uh I'm a broken man right now. I I don't even know how to put this into words, but literally like the darkest day has just came across me. Last year when we lost to Michigan, I I wasn't th- I was obviously angry and mad, but there was still a part of me thinking like it's not like Michigan has taken over this rivalry. But after that, but after that one, I, I'm genuinely afraid of Michigan now. I, I'm genuinely afraid. Thanksgiving's the worst holiday to me. I fucking hate Thanksgiving. It's the worst fucking holiday ever. And I mean, me, like, turkey fucking sucks, guys. Let's be real with ourselves. I am Thanks- superior. Thanksgiving fucking sucks. I did steaks for Thanksgiving this year, Everett. Who oh, the fuck yeah. Does steaks? Oh, well, yeah. to be fair, I had oh, Chinese food yeah. on Thanksgiving. I was really? in Cincinnati. That's all that was open. Now I know. Uh, I, I was. I, gonna, I, had, I had. I had Thanksgiving. I, I, certain people I, eat Chinese food on Thanksgiving. I know that because my grand, my grandpa used to run a Chinese restaurant. But okay. Well, I, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I was standing on uh, Nippert Field in Cincinnati, Ohio, eating Chinese food. That was how I spent my Thanksgiving. Actually, f- screw it. This is how I enough uh, the episode. Everett, explain to us what a college football Thanksgiving is like. E- explain to us what Thanksgiving Day is like for a college football team uh, as a, I know you're not a water boy, but fuck it for the sake of this, for a water boy of a college football team, tell us what Thanksgiving is like. So we travel, so it really depends on what day the game is on for us. Yeah, you the- happen to have, yeah. yeah a so some, some, some people play Game day is on Thanksgiving. Some people yeah. have game day the next day. Ours was the, the next day. If you have game day on Thanksgiving, obviously you can have Thanksgiving dinner, whatever. You'll be back in time. We traveled on Thanksgiving. And the way that that worked for us is we got there. We did our thing. We had like Thanksgiving, like food to go, like pre-made meals that we got to have before we got on the plane, got on the plane, flew there. I go straight to the stadium. I'm in the stadium for like five hours. Stark out, ordered Chinese food because it's the only thing that was open. Ate Chinese food sitting outside on the field. What time is it? What time is it? Like seven o'clock. <laughs> that sounds like a Thanksgiving meal to me. <laughs> go back to the stadium. Go. I, we finally finish at the stadium. Bus back to the hotel. That's my night. That's it. <laughs> Wake up at five a.m. the next day. So it sucks. <laughs> so it fucking sucks is what you're telling me. No, <laughs> definitely not. Yes, it sucks. I mean, you gotta find you gotta you gotta keep you gotta, you gotta keep yourself company on those on the on those Thanksgiving trips. Yeah, I mean, hey, thank you for your service. <laughs> that that was brave of you, brave of you for for the value. But hey, you boys, you boys went in there and got a W. If we didn't, if we hadn't won that game. Who are you guys playing next? Who are you guys playing? UCF, who doesn't deserve to be there because they lost the Navy and barely fucking beat USF on a fraudulent touchdown call. Oh, I thought they lost to USF. If they lost, yeah, they they were up 28 to zero. They were up 28 to zero. Then they came back. They were losing 38 to 39. And then with 30 seconds left. If they lost, though, would it have been a rematch with Cincy? It would have been a rematch with Cincy. And Luke Fickle probably would still be their head coach. No, he's officially announced as Wisconsin. The yes, but, is, but he didn't announce it until after since he had officially been eliminated. Oh, actually, yeah, I get your point. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, true, true, true. Luke Fickleman might still be in Cincinnati. Uh, no comment on the other side, but yeah, uh, that, that's all I got, Everett. Anything else? With else? that, thank you guys so much for watching, listening. Rate us five stars. Give us a like. Give us a follow. Check us out at TikTok, at Twitter, at YouTube, at Waterboy Pod. Make sure that you actually are able to read and count because some people that uh, 
like her content. Yeah, week, common week content 12, 12 was not the Ohio State Michigan week, guys, but that's okay. I didn't expect Fine. you guys to, to pick um, up on that. Uh, I, I want to say one quick thing. Uh, seriously, though, congratulations, Michigan fans. I know how it feels. I'm now like fucking, I don't know, 16 and four against Michigan in my life. I know how it feels. One one of my good friends I know my whole life we had on the Michigan Man Pod. He's now four and sixteen lifetime against uh, Ohio State. So, like for him, uh, literally they were up by fucking I don't know fifteen with three minutes left, and he was still not confident they had the win sealed yet. Like that's that's the shit that he's gone through. Like that's the shit he's been through as a Michigan fan in this game. So. Obviously, I'm fucking pissed and I'm hurting, but for the few Michigan fans that I know that are actually good people, unlike most of you fucking scumbag pricks, most of you, I fucking hate all of you and want you to literally die. But for the few out there who are good people, I'm happy for you. It's a good win. I know how it feels. Congratulations. But yeah. With uh, Waterboys out.